To you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant to us, Lord, we pray, the spirit to think and to do always those things that are right, that we who cannot exist without you may by you be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first lesson, Genesis 37, verses 1 through 4, 12 through 28. Jacob settled in the land where his father had lived as an alien, the land of Canaan. This is the story of the family of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was shepherding the flock with his brothers. He was a helper to the sons of Bilhah and Zilpah, his father's wives, and Joseph brought a bad report of them to their father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any other of his children because he was the son of his old age and he had made him a long robe with sleeves. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his other brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now his brothers went to pasture their father's flock near Shechem and Israel said to Joseph, are not your brothers pasturing the flock at Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. He answered, here I am. So he said to him, go now, see if it is well with your brothers and with the flock and bring word back to me. So he sent him from the valley of Hebron. He came to Shechem and a man found him wandering in the fields. The man asked him, what are you seeking? I am seeking my brothers, he said. Tell me, please, where are they pasturing the flock? The man said, they have gone away, for I have heard them say, let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. They saw him from a distance, and before he came near to them, they conspired to kill him. They said to one another, here comes this dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we shall say that a wild animal has devoured him and we shall see what will become of his dreams. But when Reuben heard it, he delivered him out of their hands saying, let us not take his life. Reuben said to them, shed no blood, throw him into this pit here in the wilderness, but lay no hand on him that he might rescue him out of their hand and restore him to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe the long robe with sleeves that he wore, and they took him and threw him into a pit. The pit was empty and there was no water in it. Then they sat down to eat, and looking up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels carrying gum, balm, and resin on their way to carry it down to Egypt. Then Judah said to his brothers, what profit is it if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him, for he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers agreed. When some Midianite traders passed by, they drew Joseph up, lifting him out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. And then they took Joseph to Egypt. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Continue with Psalm 
105 or portions of 105. Sing antiphonally, breaking at the asterisk. I will begin. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him. And speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done. His wonders of the judgments of the power. O offspring of Abraham, his servant. O children of Jacob, his chosen. Then he called for a famine in the land. And destroyed the supply of bread. He sent a man before them. Joseph was sold as a slave. They bruised his feet in fetters. His neck they took in an iron collar. Until his prediction came to pass. The word of the Lord protested him. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the people set him free. He set him as a master over his household. As a ruler over all of his possessions. To instruct his princes according to his will. And to teach his elders. Alleluia. The second letter is from Rome, uh, Paul's Rome, letter to the Romans, chapter 10, verses 5 through 15. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or who will ascend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and is so justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says... No one who believes in him will be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have never believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. 
And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. My name is Corey Varga Bergmark. I am a graduate of TC class 2020. When I first started going to church, it was more of a chore. All this talk about some guy named God, this dude named Jesus, and a ghost full of holes, and they were somehow all the same thing. At the time, I didn't know what the adjective holy meant. I had no clue what was happening. Eventually, I found a group of friends that I thought were pretty cool. Later, I realized that, uh, later I realized that we were difficult to manage in general. We were friends, but we couldn't really trust each other with our heavy thoughts. Eventually, I found a good group of friends at school. There were five of us, and our parents called us the village. Uh, I realized that the village was a group of friends that I could mostly confide in, and I realized that I wanted a group of, I, I wanted a group similar to that at church, so I found them. Or rather, they found me. This group was always molding and changing, which was mostly a good thing. But the EYC is unlike any group of friends I've ever had. Without them, I probably wouldn't be here today. I trust all of them, and I hope they trust me. Almost like Peter did in the gospel, but with a little more faith. Today's gospel mainly talks about trust, like how Peter trusts Jesus, the people believing in Jesus, and Jesus trusting the whole world to do the right thing. Trust isn't too far off from faith or belief, which I have struggled with sometimes. A big part of faith is the struggling and pain that happens in life. And although my faith has been tested many times, the EYC has always had my back. One thing I have learned is that sometimes the best way to move forward is to move, is to look back. Recently, I've had to trust Jesus almost like Peter did, except instead of stepping out of the boat, I'm going to college. <laughs> and when I start to drown, I hope that Jesus reaches out and grabs my hand. Even though among my friends, I'm most likely the start of most pranks or jokes, I still hope that they would trust me. I rarely share my sorrows and worries, most of which are covered by a smile or a laugh. Uh, my friends have helped me grow so much since I first came to church. Now I see church as less of a chore, but more of a way to connect with God and my faith. Thank you. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Trust is not that far off from faith. As I was preparing with Corey for his reflections today, and as I have now heard him utter that phrase twice today, I think it is loaded with meaning. There's a lot in it for us all to reflect on. And as I started reflecting this week on this rather well-known story of Peter walking on the water, it reminded me of a couple of other stories from scripture, and I'd like to share those, and I'd like to ask you as you hear them to look for commonalities, to look for common uh, elements in all these stories. So first, just a quick recap of Peter's story. We are told that Jesus is walking toward them, and Peter rather provocatively says, if it is you, Lord, command me to come to you. I wish we knew a lot more about the context. I wish we knew more about Peter's inflection, and I certainly wish 
we knew more about Jesus' reaction, more than just one word. The one word response is, come. Now, we all know we could say a one word reaction many different ways. Come, come on, beckoning. Or it could also be rather frustrated. Ah, come. Could be either. So hold that, hold that lightly. So that was the pattern with Peter. I'd like to read a section now from John's Gospel and see if you hear similar patterns. The setting is the evening of Easter day. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the 12, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, Jesus' disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. And now an encounter from Luke's gospel involving St. John the Baptist. The disciples of John the Baptist reported to him all the things that Jesus had been doing. So John summoned two of his disciples and sent them to the Lord to ask, are you the one who is to come or are we to wait for another? When the men had come to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you to ask, are you the one who is to come or are we to wait for another? Jesus, who had just then cured many people of diseases, plagues, and evil spirits, and had given sight to many who were blind, answered them, Go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. Three different encounters, three different followers of Jesus. What do they have in common? a degree of doubt, an expression of that doubt, and a degree of testing of the Lord. All relationships that are worth anything are based on trust. Sometimes we have to poke and prod and even test a relationship. At least I know I do, and I have, and I think it relates to parenting as well. Hear the words of Thomas, I will not believe unless the words of St. John the Baptist, are you the one or should we wait? The words of Peter, if it is you, Lord, command me to come to you. But what's even more significant is how Jesus meets them all. There may have been a bit of frustration or sadness in his response. It's hard to tell. There may have been a bit of, you should have known better by now. But what's clear is Jesus is unthreatened, he's unruffled, and he's loving, and he meets them where they need to be met. He meets them in their honest searching and questioning and says, here's the story. Either do what you need to do, I can take it, here's what I've been doing, or look at all this that's been happening, or put your hand here, or walk here. I believe Jesus meets us much the same way. That constant invitation from a secure position and the encouragement to live more from that position of faith. Jesus didn't leave them in their doubt. He certainly asked them and encouraged them to move stronger in their relationship with him. Now, I imagine that each of these three had other moments of doubt in their faith life later. But I wonder how they thought back to this particular encounter with Jesus that they each had and how that strengthened them to move forward. 
It's sometimes said that the best thing we can do when we come to a crossroads, when we don't know whether to go left or right or even straight, is to remember the last crossroads. And as Christians, to remember the last crossroads where Jesus met us, that we were provided for, we were cared for, we were supported, and we were able to move ahead. I think one of the reasons that this current global crisis in which we find ourselves is so hard is that it really is novel. None of us has lived through a pandemic before. Our global society hasn't in least, for at least a century. So we don't have a recent crossroads that we ourselves have journeyed through to look back at. So it's no wonder we need, like Peter, to say, if it is you, Lord, show us what to do. Meet us here. Help us. Or like Thomas, I'm not sure we're going to believe until we see evidence. Or like John the Baptist, are you in this, Lord? In our Thursday morning Bible study in Acts, we have been recently re reading several miraculous accounts. And a common theme that we've noted is that the miracles, at least in the Acts of the Apostles, are never meant solely for the person who's being healed or delivered, whatever the miracle is. They're meant as opportunities for witness to all of those around, all those seeing the account of what happened. So what I hope and believe more and more is that when we are all on the other side of this pandemic, there will be generous reflection that will happen among us, asking what God meant for us to learn during this time. Because following that pattern in Acts, I also believe it would be true to say what we're being called to learn, how we're being called to grow in our relationship with Jesus, trust in God's word, is not just for us, but to those, for those to whom we will witness that we may witness with integrity, that we may witness with conviction. And often a key element of the integrity of our witness is having struggled, is having asked the hard questions, is having hoped and pride. Trust is not that far off from faith. I thank Corey again for those words. And I ask you, to meditate this week on where your trust lies now. What do you need to ask of our Lord? Where do you need to ask, like these forebears in the faith, where do you need to ask Jesus to meet you during this time so that you may be a stronger follower, a stronger disciple, a stronger witness? May God bless us all in that endeavor. Amen. Let us continue by saying together our expression of faith, the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. Lord, whenever your people gather, you are in the midst of us. And whenever your people gather, we are called to pray for the life and the health of the world. We do so now with the words of Psalm 105. We give thanks to the Lord. O oh God, your people gather and we pray for the whole church, its members and its mission. We pray for Jeffrey, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, Presiding Bishop, Susan, Jennifer, and Porter, our bishops. We pray for our clergy, Randy, Susan, and Sam, our vestry, our youth leaders, and Sunday school teachers, for the new and ongoing ministries of this parish, and indeed, for all who lead your people and your church. We pray especially this week for the Reverend Dr. Esther Kramer, one of our recent seminarians, who was ordained to the priesthood this past Thursday. We give thanks to the Lord. O oh God, your people gather and we pray for the nation and all in authority. We pray for Donald, our president, Ralph, our governor, Alexandria's mayor, Justin, and Libby, Arlington's county board chair. We pray for those with power and authority whose decisions shape our lives and our community. We give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. O oh God, your people gather and we pray for the concerns of our local community. We pray for those in and around Alexandria, Arlington, and DC who are in need. We pray for our neighbors who are hungry, thirsty, or without adequate clothing or shelter. We pray for our neighbors who are out of work, unable to pay bills, and having to make impossible choices. We pray for our neighbors who are victims of neglect or abuse or violence. We give thanks to the Lord. Oh God, your people gather and we pray for the welfare of the world. We pray for those who are struggling to live their lives and to build the world they want to live in. We pray for activists and protesters. We pray for police and emergency responders. We pray for medical workers and social workers. We pray for all who work for a world of peace, compassion, and love. And we pray for peaceful, compassionate, and loving solutions to the world's many problems. We give thanks to the Lord. And call upon your name. Oh God. Bye. Your, your people gather and we pray for those who suffer and those in any trouble. We pray especially for those who were injured in the Beirut explosion and in the air crash in India. We pray for healing and hope for those on our prayer list. For Nancy, Dick, Mike, Lucy, Ted, Catherine, Diane, Bruce, Aggie, Natalie, Joan, Anne, Raven, Tony, Tom, Mary, Peyton, and Marianne. We pause now to add, silently or aloud, names weighing on our hearts.
We give thanks to the Lord. O oh God, we say again, your people gather and we pray for those who suffer and those in any trouble. We pray for those who have succumbed to the COVID-19 pandemic. We pray for those who are lost, for those who are left behind, for those who live and work in conditions that might not be healthy or safe. We pray also for every EMT, nurse, doctor, hospital staff member, and caregiver whose call to heal and to help propels them even in this time of crisis. We pray for our researchers and technicians, for swift vaccines and treatments and cures, for all those whose labor is for the health and safety of others. We give thanks to the Lord. Call upon your name. Oh God, your people gather and we pray for the continued safety and health of all of our students who are leaving soon to attend college. We also pray for the well being of their family members. We give thanks to the Lord. We call upon his name. Oh God, your people gather and we pray for the departed. We pray for those who are dead and dying, especially for those who were killed in the Beirut explosion and the India air crash. May they have peace and rest in you, and may they be welcomed into love, into your eternal kingdom. We give thanks to the Lord. And call upon his name. Gracious God, accept the fervent prayers of your people, and in the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give honor and glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And now, may the peace of the Lord be always with you so with you i realize now that i have left out the confession so we will simply slow down a little bit during the lord's prayer there is a confession in the lord's prayer and uh so at that point we will slow down and uh remember our uh, our sins and confess them at that point in time so again peace be with you I think maybe the Lord just didn't feel like we needed to confess today. All right. Good morning and welcome to this service of virtual Eucharist from Emmanuel Church on the Hill. I think in our prayers today we should be giving thanks for our coming through relatively unscathed the recent remnants of the hurricane, even as we continue to pray for those, particularly in the Northeast, who continue to suffer the effects. I also want to give thanks today for Corey Wargo Bergmark for his offering his homily today. It follows an, a long-standing tradition at Emmanuel of asking any of our recent high school graduates who are willing and feel so called to offer a brief homily. So thank you for that, Corey. And I will be thinking for some time about how trust is not that far off from faith. Um, I want to give thanks as well for our weather this morning, which enabled our earlier outdoor worship, which was, was lovely, uh, and our continued commitment, weather permitting, to offer both of those services. If you have not yet tried the in-person earlier service, I invite you to do so, to give it, to give it a whirl. Uh, we are doing our level best to make it safe, to make it easy and accessible. And you could talk to lots of folks who have tried it if you would like. Uh, but we're also continuing to offer to the best of our ability this Zoom service. And if you know of people who might want to join us in this service, please let us know. 
so that we can get invitations to that. Uh, evangelism is difficult, almost impossible during this time uh, in terms of seekers, visitors. But if you know of someone who might want to join these services, let us know and we'll do all we can to make that happen. Uh, you're also invited to stay after this service for coffee hour if you would like. And I direct your attention to the announcements in the bulletin this week. Walk in love as Christ loved us. Wonder so aimless, I filled with sin. I would let my dear Savior in. Then Jesus came like stranger in the night. say together the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give them thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and dark angels and with all the company of heaven who forever say this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, 
Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O oh God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink this, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O oh Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O oh Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with Jacob and Rachel and Leah and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant, grant us thy peace. You lift this up with me. The gifts of God for the people of God. My Jesus, 
I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. And though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never, Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for our desire to eat and drink the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, for uniting us with him and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Unto God's gracious protection, I commit you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make her face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace and health and safety now and forever. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jane is on a well-deserved vacation this morning. We are guest organisted by Ted Gustin, um, who spent 37 years at Christ Church and came to visit us this morning. And we are very grateful for him. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.